and prayer we must this very evening and always going forward. And I will pray in the language of heaven because Chukukika Biyama is in control of all that we have been doing and will continue to do until Biafra is restored and all the suffering indigenous populations in the damnable zoological republic are set free. Chine ke nan ke prumi yene ne chuko kika bambo yene fi wana jan hanso yam mambu nine. Onyo bo nani yana achi. Eli gwano wana gwa kebe hona nyagi ne pere gamra geno miko geben de gene se pede ngozi. Ani wene to yi. Agwa ne gato matu o joni nene kendiro. Iwe nyanyen do ala kedin nubo dono bochin keta. And we na sin he jam mani no toni ne dra han sorry. Onyo bana ni aki kiri no no padra kaya. And we na okuri na sin na koma mani ge kelegi kojo mani kelegi. And we na jagema we ne toy we na soproge ni si umugiri ne bundi kundi we zo kumba poroha kaha we chekwa alan sorry be biya flonyo na chine kene ni kuranyo kwa. No make a tag a candy no way where I lance up your phone. You're not in a can and can't believe it. I want a gat to my toe, Johnny and Candy room. Monday now, I'm a baby in the ditch. You're not in a can. You never can get to an opportunity. And you went there to you. When I see only one in a china can and kept rooming in him. Oh, no, Bonanian as a pota. Oh, no, Bonanian Bopuyan in the Buyana. Amen. And you went out, says the Bobet and Gossi. Now, not to donate Jamman, I'm so poor. Sit in a big Marone big. He said. He said, he said, Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you notify each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much. And remember, remember in this channel, we speak up for the people who have been oppressed in the construction called Nigeria. We speak up mainly about the intimidation against the Biafrans. We we'll speak up for the Dudu ones, we we'll speak up for the Middle Betters and every indigenous tribe that has been suppressed in the country of Nigeria. Our duty here is to speak the truth, bring the applied to the front burner, to the world, so that the world will know what is going on in that country of Nigeria. A lot is really going on. And the media are not helping matters. They are playing it down, trying to sweep everything that is happening on that contraction under the carpet. But we are here to make sure that the world knows what is happening. We cannot be silent. We are not preaching hate speech. We are not talking down on anybody, but we are saying the truth and nothing but the truth. Setting the record straight. That is what we are doing here. And remember, for the beer friends, if you have not joined our school in the 150 days prayer, it is not yet late. We are almost going to the end of the prayer. Please join. Join. Pray as much as you can. Our school in the Nandekano is always on his knees, praying for you and I seven good times every day. Why won't you pray for him at least once in a day? This is the only way we can be able to overcome the challenges that are here. We didn't know what was coming until today. Today, you can see what is happening in the southeastern part of Nigeria. And the only way we can overcome this challenge is by praying and also working. Prayer can help you a lot to run away from danger. Stay away from wrong information. Stay away from deception. Pray along with Ashton Mazinani Kano so that Chukwaka Abiyama will reveal to you what is about to happen and how to go about it. That is why we are here. Today, we're going to talk about the situation in the contraption called Nigeria, more especially in the southeastern region. As you know, the southeastern region is hot as we speak. They have been threatening us of war, threatening of war in the southeastern region. Today, the Janjaweed have brought that war in the southeastern region of Nigeria, calling it the Golden Dawn. That was the name they gave it, the Golden Dawn. They want to install a new dawn in the southeastern region. What does that tell you? They didn't come for peace, they are coming for war. And the people they have sent in the southeastern part of Nigeria are the recruited Boko Haram members. These people who have been, who claim to be repentant Boko Haram, repentant terrorists, are the people that have been pushed down to the southeastern region to begin to kill innocent people indiscriminately. As you can see, they have just started the operation and a lot of lives have been lost. Lives have been lost. People have been shot point blank for committing no offense just because they are their friends. Just because they are suspected of being Biafrans, that is the only one. And we cannot deny it. Why is it so hard for people to understand that every single soul in the old southeastern region 
he said Biafra. Every single soul in the old Southeastern region is a Biafra. So when people are talking that they are looking for Biafras, you are looking for the people from the Southeastern region to kill. And that is exactly what they are doing. That's exactly what they are doing. It doesn't matter the propaganda you see the political elite who are who are part of this very killing. Political elite, you can see Omahi came online to say that they are part of the uh, operation. Omahi came to testify and say that the political elite are forming their own gang in order to demonize ESN, not to demonize IPOB. That the political elites are trying to hijack the strong, Biafran struggle. Omahi said it. That same Umahi came to tell us that we are not Biafrans. Umahi is just talking to himself. He is not speaking the mind of people. 99.9% .9 of people in the old Southeastern region identify themselves as Biafrans. They are Biafrans. You see where you have installed the killing. Umahi came on national television to say that we are not Biafrans. That the Southeastern region are not Biafrans. What a lie. A blatant lie. Why he is saying it? Biafrans are sitting at home telling the world that we are not part of Nigeria, we are Biafrans. 99.9% .9 of people in that region are all Biafrans. They are all Biafrans and they identify with Biafra. Once you mention Biafra, people wake up and they want to hear what you want to say. That shows whom they are. But somebody who is supposed to be representing these people came and denied the identity. Denial of identity. This is what the judge will have institutionalized from day one. From amalgamation, they have made it that we cannot be able to take up our identity. They have made some group of people to be shy to call themselves Igbos, call themselves Biafra, identify themselves with whom they are. People begin to deny their identity. More especially the political elites, they gave them that condition. For you to rise as a politician, you must deny your identity. And that is what they are doing. You saw Wicked the other time, he denied being an Igbo man. Even when it is obvious, from his actions, his dressing, his name and everywhere, he's an evil man. But these people are denying whom they are because of their selfish interests. Following this very agenda of division that the British have installed in Nigeria, Old Man Dafudio took over from it. Amadou Bello took from it. This is what the agenda, the Southeastern politicians are pursuing, making us not to be able to know whom we are. And may Chukwu Kabiya will continue to bless our Sudan Masinda Dekano because this is the main reason why Masinda Dekano came to destroy this very false information. And he has succeeded. Masinda Dekano destroyed this information and made the whole South region to remember that they are one people. They are one people from one origin with one culture. They are not two. People, they have one culture from one parents. That is whom we are. It doesn't matter what anybody is talking about. It doesn't matter the, 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 the religion you decide to choose. It doesn't matter the tongue or your dialect. We are one people from one father in the old South region. And we are all Biafrans. Biafra is the name that unites us. The ginger weed have taken away that bite of Biafra in their, in, in their own mouth. They took away the bite of Biafra. Just to make sure they do not have anything to do with it. They don't have anything that unites us. Just to make sure they destroy everything that unites the old South region. They are planning on daily basis. And our politicians are helping them to take away this very identity of ours. Something that made us whom we are. A unique thing that made us whom we are. The politicians are helping them to take it away from us. Meanwhile, these same politicians are coming on national television to tell us that they are bringing their old brothers from all over the world to settle them in the contemporary called Nigeria. You have forgotten. I'm going to play that video again for you. So you see. And of course, we will try more to cultivate that culture in our people, while at the same time bringing the Fulanis in one fold and try to arrest their traditional uh, practice of moving from one place to the other. And that is very, uh, very big, a big, an uphill task. But I think we can communicate with them more. Because to them, they don't have borders from Cameroon to Nigeria. But that's the thing, Excellency. How do we ensure that those who will be participating in this federal government largely funded program will be Nigerians? Uh, in terms of the funding? No, in terms, in of, terms the of the operations. Operations. You said to bring in the Fulanis together. 
We have see, names from you other see countries the issue well. of misconception, I see there is a lot of mistrust and misconception with regards to the Fulani man. The Fulani man is a global or an African person. He moves from the Gambia, from, from Senegal, and his nationality is just a Fulani man. And uh, as a person, I may have my relations in the Cameroon. But they are also Fulani men. I have relations because from the maternal side, I'm a Fulani man. And that is why we want to educate people. A Fulani man sees himself as a Bael son, as uh, somebody coming from the Niger Delta, because he speaks the Niger Delta language, which you and I don't. And of course, we would have to just take this as part of our own heritage, something that uh, is, nice, is African, and that we cannot just close the border and say the Fulani man is just a Nigerian or this. No. Uh, in most cases, the crisis are precipitated by those outside Nigeria. When there is a reprisal, it is not the Fulani man within Nigeria that causes it. It is that culture of getting revenge, which is embedded in the, in the, in the tradition of the Fulani man, that attracts reprisal from all so over the, the If the I world. understand it, does that mean that those Fulani men who are uh, maybe domicile in other countries who move around, they can come into the country and this plan will accommodate them as well. Yes, that's what we want to do. But it has to be done through sensitization. Telling them you have to buy in in the project and you use the language, the culture is up to be able to convince them. Away from the mistrust where the whole system of transhumans or pastoralism is criminalized. Criminalization of pastoralism is the problem that we have with this, with this project. And it requires people with passion who understand them and who they believe in, people like us from that part of the country, to say, yes, we have this. Because today there is no limit to the accusation that this and that has happened and it is the Poland man who caused it. There is no tribe that is not uh, that you don't have this uh, criminality in. But certainly uh, the way a manner we do it is really exacerbating the crisis and the okay. problems. W will there be any form of documentation of all the people that will be, you know, uh, you know, will yes, we are taking that. Uh, oh, yes, that is going to give Nigeria the opportunity to really have the best in terms of documentation in the demographics. Because, as I said, a plan man settles anywhere, anywhere he can feed his cattle. And so, if they are put in one place and they are made to understand that this is for to save them and their animals. They are, they are exposed to the vagaries of, of, of the forest and what is going on, cattle rustling, killings and what have you, and that's uh, why it is important for them to understand that staying in one place is, is good. And of course, in terms of the uh, best practice of carrying the meat, carrying the meat, uh, the, the cows and the, yeah, let's, and stay the with, or, let, let's stay with that security angle for a bit. Is there going to be, is, is the, this, uh, plan going to be a fenced and enclosure where anyone who comes in is secured so there is no one that can just come in from anywhere else no 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 it is going to be a colony and okay. a colony does not require a you, you will understand not going the to reason, be a prison you will it understand is, the reason why people are concerned because of all the security issues that have been happening over time so if that these forests are there anyway Okay. If you don't occupy them and create a colony out of them, they create uh, places for the criminals. Yeah. And today, that's why you have the Zambiza forest, because yeah. it is not being utilized. But, but Your Excellency, much as yes, I mean, uh, they are fantastic. Uh, we have met a lot of them who are full as well. But the concern, too, is why should federal government use fed resources for this country to accommodate uh, Fulani men who are not Nigerians. You see, as I said, we are already accommodating them. Do you delineate and then really know who is not a Fulani man from Nigeria? They are all Nigerians because I said their identity, their own citizenship is Nigerian, even though they have, we have relations all over the world, all over the world, Africa. And so presumably they are Nigerians. I think you get me. That is, the, the, that is the misunderstanding. They move from one place to the other, and they have relations, kids and kings in all the parts of the country, and even outside the country. So that is why our own population is fluid. We cannot certainly not say, this is the population of Nigeria. So this, always... is this is a governor, Bauchi State governor, a city governor Bauchi State, telling you that they are going to bring their own brothers from all over the place and settle them in Nigeria. And not only that, he said in that video that 
Fulanis are just Fulanis. They are not Nigerians. They don't identify themselves as Nigerians. What they know themselves as is Fulanis. He said, wherever a Fulani man is, he is a Fulani. And that is how they know themselves. And you, from the southern part of Nigeria, is busy demonizing your own brothers, killing your own brothers because of this same person who is bringing his own brother from all over the world to settle in your own land. You are killing your own brothers. You do not stand for them. You do not speak up for them. Instead, you are demonizing them. This is where we have found ourselves. You saw somebody, a terrorist, come on national television to defend a fellow terrorist with security given to him by the presidency. He came to defend the bandits. Even showing, showing somebody on national television, somebody, a pressman who was calling out these people, calling out the bandits for what they are. They are terrorists and criminals. A terrorist, fellow terrorist came out and shone them down, Gumi, shone the media down before the whole world and tell them, do not call them terrorists and do not call them criminals. That even that the press are the criminals, not these people. Sheikh, you seem to approach this with a sense that uh, these bandits are victims. Exactly why? And um, what are their demands really? What do they really want? Because in spite of your negotiations, attacks continue. Uh, attacks have lessened. It's just one case you have of the Kagara boys. Without it, uh, there is a drastic change. In, we have seen absolute uh, drastic change in Zamfara, in Sokoto State, where negotiations are going. So you don't take sporadic, uh, sporadic cases and just, uh, uh, what do you call it, explode it. Even the Medjugorje incident here is, I don't think it's a big threat because the military has surrounded the country, the town. There is no more continuous bombardment. It's just sporadic, sporadic uh, attacks. Shouldn't frighten people. I think the military should be on top of the situation. But yet, negotiations are very useful in seeing that we uh, get these boys or youth to get sense into their head and just admonish them and show them the fear of God. And it also works. Okay, so um, in terms of what they want, what exactly did they say to you will make them surrender their weapons? Because no matter how you look at it, the criminals. You see, uh, you are emphasizing on criminality. I don't know who, even the press, press are criminals too, because they are putting fire into, what they are putting oil into fire. These people are listening to you. You see, you don't address them as criminals if you want them to succumb. Youth are ready to put down their weapons. Now you are, they are hearing you are calling them criminals. How do you want them to cooperate? So you have to show them they are Nigerians and that they should not hurt children and that they should be law abiding, they should be good. This is, this is the language we want to hear the, the press to assist us in getting the voice. You see, when we talk with them with a nice uh, wordings, they are ready to put their weapons down, they are ready to listen to us. On national television, nothing was done to him, he was praised. But what do you see in the southeastern region? In the southern region as a whole, where their own people is asking for a legitimate right, something that is in their constitution, self-determination, they come and call their people names. They call them their people terrorists. They name their own people terrorists and proscribe them. And each time they come on national television, they call them proscribed group. They call them criminals. They call them bandits. They call them all of names. But in the north, they come to the national television to defend their own people. Even when their own people are openly killing people, these same people have shot down an aircraft. They shot down an aircraft. Yet, they refuse to proscribe them. And you are telling me that I should begin to talk of one Nigerian. And somebody who is not, is he who claims to be educated and mentally okay, we continue to fight for one Nigeria. Somebody from the southeastern region, somebody from the southern region, you must be mad. You must be mad. And that thing you are chasing is going to consume you. Any person that is in the southeastern region supporting this evil will surely be consumed. They will definitely kill you. That is obvious. They will kill you in order to frame up IPOB and wait for your death. It is already at your door. It's a question of time. You saw our father, Chimwetalago, humiliated simply because he was wearing a garment. A garment that has the symbols of, of, of what we represent on it. A garment that he wore, something that is dear to his heart, he wore. The military, the military humiliated him. 
And after we heard that he has been left by the military, the DSS came and arrested him again. Today, he's in the heart of DSS. And those people who claim to be representing us are not speaking up. The elite are not speaking up. Those who are speaking up go to media, you will see some idiots, some animals, some who call themselves Biafrans. Idiots and animals who call themselves Biafrans talking down on Chimitarago. Some of them are asking on their platform, why is he wearing that, what, that uniform? Why won't he wear it? What is wrong in Chimitarago wearing what he wants to wear? What is wrong in it? Is there any law in Nigeria that bound you, that which bound somebody from, that designs the clothes to wear to wear? Is there anything like that? So people are not, are not, cannot be able to mourn, the, mourn their own when they die or, or be to mourn anything they want to. Biafra is in captivity and they are killing us on a daily basis. And somebody decides to wear a, a cloth to show solidarity with your own people. Then they arrested him. Even though when in the cloth he's wearing, it was not written in the way Biafra. It wasn't written IPOB. Yet they arrested him. They arrested him. Even though you said you prescribe IPOB. I know. When I was saying that prescription of IPOB is prescription of every single person in Biafra land, people thought it was a joke. Today it is playing out. It is playing out. The governors prescribed, prescribed themselves. They prescribed themselves thinking that it was about IPOB. Today you can see what is playing out. You can see what is playing out. They are killing people. Killing Biafrans. In the name of saying you are a member of the IPOB because you have a flag, you'll be killed. Where does that happen? In a country where you're supposed to be a surplus state, where you're supposed to have freedom to do what you want to do, and people are killing each other, killing people because they are using flag. They have now prescribed every Biafran. When I was saying it initially, people thought it was a joke. That the prescription is the provision of every single Biafran, living, every single Biafran that is alive. Today you can see what is happening. It is not going to end on Chiwetarago. They are going to kill many other people and they're going to arrest many other people. I saw a video of a mother, a mother who is being molested again by the military simply because he was wearing that color. He was wearing that color. In Biafra land, you do not want them to use their color or hold that which is dear to their hearts. You want to take away our identity by all means possible. It is not going to happen. You cannot take people's identity. It doesn't matter how you try. We have been saying it. They have been doing all their work, media work they are doing. Now they are on the ground to enforce the taking away of our land, our identity by force. They have come on the ground to kill and to take life by all means possible. <laughs> he saw it a mother an old woman being molested simply because he was wearing a regalia with the colors of Biafra they should be ready to arrest every single soul living in the old southern region because more people are going to wear it that is going to be our uniform very very soon every Biafra should begin to sew that and wear it as a uniform more especially on the days I have to sit at home Biafra should begin to use that color those colors and that that as their uniform that is what they, let them arrest every Biafra let them take us let them be ready to arrest every single Biafra because every Biafra we will begin to use that clothes as our uniform it is going to be the major club we, we are mourning we are on mourning our land is on occupation they are just to celebrate just as people when they are mourning they some choose to wear white some choose to wear black for their mourning Biafrans for their money, we have chosen to wear our color, the color that we, know, we are known for. The, the, the color we are known as Biafra, we are, we are going to wear the color of our flag. 
to mourn what is happening in the contemporary core Nigeria. To mourn what is happening in the South Central region. Every Biafran should show that cloth and wear. That should be our cloth. Let them arrest every single Biafran. Let us see. This is the time for civil disobedience. It is not by gun or firing gun or doing anything. Civil disobedience. Every Biafran should prepare his own clothes with a flag. Prepare your own clothes and wear it. Let them arrest all of us. We cannot be silent. It doesn't matter what they do. They have come to kill and to destroy. We knew that this is what is coming. And today, everything that Rasulullah Mazin and have been shouting and talking about is happening before your own very eyes. And more is coming. More is coming. We will not relent. Do not give up. Do not give up. Chukwo Kabiyama is not asleep. We are getting to the end of the road. We are going into Biafra. And walking into Biafra will not be easy. We are a step into Biafra and it will not be easy. Don't let your effort. This is the time to speak up for what matters. Do not be distracted by any silly talk. Do not be distracted by any silly instruction. The only thing that has to matter for you, you that is broadcasting, you that is speaking about Biafra, is freedom of Biafra. That is all. Freedom of our spring that and the which is the freedom of Biafra. That's the only thing that matters to us now. Any agenda you are bringing that does not involve the freedom of our and the Kano or freedom of Biafra, we are not going to be part of it. I will speak about it on my program. The only thing that matters for you and I now, everybody who is sincere, legitimately, sincerely fighting for Biafra, should be talking about the freedom of Asuna Mazin and the Kano and do anything possible. The sit at home, enforce it by all means possible, and let people show that cloth. Biafra flat cloth, wear it at all times. That is the way we have to mourn. This is the time for us to sit up. Sit up and do that which is right. It is the time for us to take our voice back. This is the time to take that freedom. The kingdom of God is very violent. And only the violent take it by force. We have to take it by force. Don't be afraid. Our father, Chingwe Telago, have done his own part. This old woman played her own part. What are you waiting for? What are you doing? What are you doing to air your own voice? What are you doing to tell the world what is happening? What are you doing to add to what is happening? Instead, you are talking down on people who are protesting and people who are having a seat at home. May God have mercy on you. Shukuo Kukabiyama have said it that we are going to be free and we'll be free. No man born of a woman can stop us. Our Sula Mazina has given us a lot of instruction and information that we have to digest. Continue to listen to the broadcast of Ashina Mazina that he has made for us. All those broadcasts will lead you a very long way. It will reveal a lot of things to you and make you know the right path to follow. I am going to play another message of Asuna Mazin and the Kano to keep you on check and keep you on the path of truth. I will continue to fight for this cause until the end. Biafra is here. Michuko Kukabia will continue to bless and prosper Asuna Mazin and the Kano. Michuko Kukabia will continue to strengthen Asuna Mazin and the Kano. Michuko Kukabia will continue to give him good health, strengthen him, give him more revelation so that he will come to us very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching wherever you are watching from. And remember this. Bye bye. See you again on the next video.